The scope that we will use most often when we do color correction is the waveform scope or the waveform monitor. So I'm going to show you how the waveform scope works in this lesson. Now follow along, go to Working Files, go to the Premiere Pro Projects, and open up Examples. I'm working in the custom color correction workspace that I set up in a separate lesson. Your workspace may look different, but I want to make sure that you've got the reference monitor here visible. And make sure the Gang to Program Monitor button is depressed. That's the one on the left-hand side of that group of buttons at the bottom of this panel. Right now we're looking at the four scope view. I want to look at the waveform scope. So to get to the waveform scope, I click on the panel menu here and click on the YC waveform. Now when you go to the YC waveform, you may see a lot of blue stuff like this if you happen to be hovering over this last clip. Y stands for Luma and C stands for Chroma. So the YC waveform is showing Luma and Chroma. The Chroma side of this thing is essentially useless. And I want to make sure you just turn that off. So uncheck this guy to get rid of the Chroma. You don't need to see Chroma here inside this waveform monitor. You also don't need to have this 7.5 IRE turned on. So uncheck that. 7.5 IRE is kind of an old school way of viewing a waveform because you want to avoid having things that are too black if you're using an analog TV set. Not many people use analog TV sets anymore. We're working in HD here, so we're not going to worry about that. Besides, if you want to output to something that will be played on an analog TV set, you can always adjust it later. So what we see inside the waveform scope or the waveform monitor is Luma. That's all we want to work on here is just brightness. I want to start off by taking a look at something that's just purely gray. So go back to this first clip here like that. And there's this gray thing. And now you may think that the waveform monitor is not working anymore. But if you look really closely there at that center line, at that 50 line, you'll see there's a little green line there indicating that this whole solid here is at 50% gray. Now these numbers here along the left-hand side are referred to as IRE. IRE is Institute of Radio Engineers. That is the standard here, and it more or less is percentage of brightness. Now this IRE shows up if you're working with NTSC. If you're working in PAL, volts show up, and I'll show you what I mean by that. I'll go over here to the project panel. I'm going to right-click here on the sequence. I'm going to change the sequence settings from 2997 to 25 frames per second, which is PAL. Click OK. Go back to the reference monitor. Now it's going to say volts. When you work with volts, the range goes from 0.3 to 1. So 0.3 to 1 equals 0 to 100 IRE. Just be aware of that. If I go over here and click on this gray solid like that, which goes from 1 to 0.3, you'll see that is the normal range of absolutely black to absolutely white. Let me go back to this first one again. Now I'm going to switch back to the original NTSC by right-clicking on this, going back to the sequence settings, and changing this back to 2997, which is... I think most folks who are watching this video will be in the NTSC realm of things. Let's go back to the reference monitor. What we're seeing here is 50% gray, and you can make a solid like this simply by going to the project panel and clicking on the new item icon down here, and going on down here and making a color matte. The term matte is a little confusing, and I wish that Adobe would change it. The reason is that we're going to work with mattes when we do secondary color correction, when we're carving out a certain area within a clip that we want to correct instead of the entire clip. Those are called track mats or traveling mats, and they're not color mats. It is a little confusing. So when I create a color mat, I change its name to a solid. All right, let's go back to the reference monitor. I want to change the next clip here, which shows a gradient from absolutely white to absolutely black. Now this started off as a gray solid, but I applied the ramp effect to it there. And the ramp effect goes from bright white to dark black. You can see how that works there. If you take a look at the waveform scope, you'll see that the left-hand side here is white at 100 IRE. And the right-hand side here is absolutely black at zero. So what the waveform scope does is it displays luma from left to right that matches the luma that you see here. Now, the entire left-hand side is white, so you think that, okay, if it's just entirely white on one side, that's what you get, that one thing that says 100. What happens if you have a bright sky and a dark area below the bright sky on the left-hand side or the right-hand side, something like that? Well, it looks like this, then. Here we've got white and black. Here we've got gray in the middle. Here you have white, and there's the white right there, that little green line there. And the black part, you can barely see down here at the zero line. You notice these guys go up by 10% increments here, or 10 IRE. So here's zero, and that's 10 IRE, or 10% gray scale, 20, 30, 40, 50. There's 50, it's equal in the middle like that. Keep on going to the right here, you get to 100, like that. You see that it shows both the bright area and the dark area on the left-hand side there, and the bright area and the dark area here on the right-hand side. So I think you can see that the waveform monitor shows luma values left to right, matching the program monitor over here. So what happens when you have color? And I added these color bars to the project the same way I added this gray solid. Did that by going over to the project panel, going on down here to the new item icon like that, and going on down here to bars and tone. All right, so here we've got this thing in color. 
Let's go take a look at it over here. And you see that we got all kinds of stuff going on here. This diagonal line is this gradient here from black right down there to white. It goes black down here up to white like that. This line right across there is that bright gray bar. So you can see that again, we go left to right here. This white thing right there is that white chunk right up there. This black thing is right down there. I think you begin to see how this works. So I think what's kind of interesting about all this is that what impact does color have on Luma? Now you notice that the yellow looks really bright and the blue is not quite as bright. And that seems to show up over here. You've got this really bright thing there and this other guy down here is probably not as bright. So is color what causes this or Luma? So I'm here to tell you it's just Luma. And let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna go back to this gray solid here and I'm going to click on that and open up the fast color corrector here. And I wanna add some color to this. I'm gonna take this little knob here in the middle and pull it out like so, add red to it. Notice how it's turning red here. And nothing happens to the Luma. I'll make it intensely red, super saturated red. And again, nothing happens to the Luma. The color has no effect on this. This is just Luma and the color here is hue. And the hue and the Luma are not connected. Now, if this were speed grade and I changed the color, then the Luma would change too. And there's a different workflow inside speed grade. So I'll explain that when we get to speed grade. But here, we're gonna work with Luma and hue or chroma separately. Let me go on down here a little bit farther to the color bars here again. Here we've got some color. I'll click on it, open up its fast color corrector there. What I want to do here is remove the color. I'm going to take the color out. I'm going to desaturate this. There's a saturation option down here. Let me open that up. You see this little slider. I'm going to slide this thing all the way to the left and desaturate this, make this grayscale. And let's watch what happens here inside the waveform monitor. Slide it all the way left. Now grayscale, but nothing happens. The color has no effect. The hue has no effect on the Luma. I'll make it totally saturated, like so. Really intense color, and again, the Luma doesn't change. So that's basically the structure of the waveform monitor. We're gonna use the waveform monitor over and over again when we adjust tonality. We wanna to make sure that when we adjust tonality, we have just a little bit of black down here and some highlights up here, and nothing above 100 and nothing below zero. So we have a full range of grayscale, a full range of Luma from zero to 100, or from 0.3 volts to one volt when you're working in PAL. So there you go, that's the waveform monitor. It's gonna be your best friend when you work on tonality here inside Premiere Pro.